So here's a park bench. Um, the seat looks uniform. We'll talk about what that means inside. It's supported by two legs. And um, if I didn't sit on this bench, both of those legs, just intuitively, we would know that they'd, they'd carry the same reaction force. If I was to sit on the bench, and I'm sitting closer to the left-hand leg than the right-hand leg, um, once again, intuitively, there are two forces now acting uh, on the legs. There's the weight of the bench, there's my weight. And um, once again, it just um, seems logical to presume that the left-hand leg is going to carry a bigger reaction force than the right-hand leg. So what are the reaction forces on these two legs? Let's frame up a question inside and solve it. Let's go do it. Before we frame up the question from outside, let me just say that in this particular part of the course, um, I think there are, the, the questions that you're going to get fall into, generally speaking, four categories. I've got those on the um, left-hand side of the board. You've got trestle-type questions, which we're going to look at today. You've got signpost-type questions, which also take into account cranes and drawbridges and so on and so forth. The latter question, <clears throat> and then we'll be looking at things that hang. All right, so let's look at this question that, we've, um, that I've framed up on the board. Tony has a mass of 70 kilos, and 70 kilos, roughly, and sits 0.4 of a meter from one end of a 1.9 meter bench. The uniform seat of the bench, and remember in physics, if we see the word uniform, that means that the weight acts through the middle. Of the, um, of the object. The center of gravity acts through its middle. And it has a mass of 10 kilograms. Calculate the reaction force that each of the two legs provide to the seat at the center of each leg is 0.2 meters from each end. So I'm going to put some data into this, onto this diagram that I've got over here. So I've got the uniform seat of the two legs and what, what are we seeing here that uh, I uh, mass of 70 kilos, and um, that's, can I just stand over here? Okay, so 70 kilos, so I'm going to put 70 times 9.8, which gives me my weight. That's acting 0.4 of a meter, I think I've said, from one end of the, of the bench. Um, that's 2, that's 2.2 2 of a meter, that's 0.2 of a meter, so that's okay. The weight of the bench is um, I'm going to put in the okay, 1.90 meters is the entire length of the of the bench. I'm going to use my arrows over here to indicate the limits of my measurement. Um, I'm going to then all right. So 1.9 subtract 0.2, and 0.2 is going to give me 1.5 meter, 50 meters from leg to leg. Once again, I'm using these um, boundary markers to show the limits of my measurement. And um, the seat has a, is uniform and it has a mass of 10 kilos, so 10 times 9.8. And um, the question is looking at what are the reaction forces of each leg on the seat. So I'm going to label this R1 and I'm going to label this, um, let's just move that back a bit. R2. And clearly visually, because I'm sitting at, um, at a point that's closer to the right hand leg, intuitively we, we know that the right hand leg is going to carry, um, a bigger, there's going to be a bigger reaction force on the right hand leg than on the left hand leg. Alright, so let's go ahead and, um, and solve this question now. Now I'll just make a, um, a couple of observations here. With questions on equilibrium, I've always told you in all of your physics questions to actually use a data key. Summarize your information on the left-hand side. With equilibrium type questions, I have found that if you draw a really clear picture with lots of information on it, um, you don't need to spend time on, on, on a data key. Someone once told me, if a picture paints a thousand words, then whatever you do, let it. And I think that's really good advice, particularly when you're under time pressure um, in solving questions in an exam. All right, so uh, what have we got here now? What I, I also encourage you to do is to label all the points that are of interest in a question like this. So this is point A, I'm going to label that point B, I'm going to label this point C, and I'm going to label that point, point D. 
Okay, so those points are where things are happening. Okay, the reaction of leg one, um, the weight of the seat, um, Tony's weight, and the reaction on leg two. Now, <clears throat> we know the first law of equilibrium tells us that the sum of all forces up equal the sum of all forces down. All right? We can't apply that law here at this point because we've got two unknown variables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, let's take one of those points for which there is an unknown, and that is, I'm going to say, I'm going to say point A, R1, the reaction force of, uh, of the left-hand leg on the seat. And let's consider that the point that we take our moments about. All right? And if we do that, if we look at this as one of our, um, if we look at this as our turning point, or our fulcrum, or our pivot, they all mean the same thing, then we can forget about the forces acting at this point. Okay? So I'm just going to say um, to find R2, because I'm going to take my turning point as R1, uh, take moments about A. All right, now, if I take my moments about A, we can see here, if this is my pivot, if this is my turning point, if this is my fulcrum, then the weight of the seat is going to be producing a clockwise torque about point A. Tony's weight is going to be producing, and when I use the word torque, I, I could also be substituting that with the word moment. Okay? Um, Tony's weight is producing a clockwise moment about point A. The reaction force of the, of the right hand leg is going to be producing an anti-clockwise moment or torque at that point A. Okay, now that's our unknown variable, so I'm going to keep that to the left hand side of my equality. Okay, that's going to be producing an anti-clockwise moment, so therefore I'm going to say, second law of equilibrium, the sum of the anti-clockwise moments equals the sum of the clockwise moments. So you see what I've done here? I've kept the... Um, the uh, moments that are, that are producing um, the unknown variable to the left-hand side of my equality because that's ultimately where I'm going to want it. Okay, so therefore I can see on the diagram over here what's producing the anti-clockwise moment, R2 times, what's the distance between um, R2 and the turning point? Well, it's actually going to be 1.5 meters, very clear on my diagram. And that's the only moment producing an anti-clockwise, the only force producing an anti-clockwise moment. So that's the only thing on the left-hand side of my equality. On the right-hand side, what have we got? We've got, um, at that point A, I've got the um, weight of the seat, which is 10 times 9.8, okay. times the distance from the, from the uh, middle of the seat to um, the left-hand leg. That distance is going to be um, 0.75 of a meter, 0.75 of a meter. Okay, in other words, half the distance, half of 1.5, which is 0.75. And to that, I'm going to add the uh, moment produced by Tony's weight, which is 70 times 9.8 multiplied by the distance, distance A to C, which I've got, well, I've got this all over here. It's 1.3 meters, 1.3 meters. All right, so if we solve the, um, the um, equation we solve for R2 now, R2 is going to be equal to uh, 10 times 9.8 times 0.75 gives me 73.5 plus 70 times 9.8 times 1.3 gives me 891.8 and we divide that all by what's on the left hand side of the equal sign which is 1.5, and that gives me a value of R2 of 643.53, 643.53 newtons. We're going to round that to three significant figures, so we get an answer of 6.4, 6.44 is what I get, multiplied by 10 to the power of 2 newtons. And I'm going to underline that. All right, so we've solved for R2. Now, I think the simplest way to solve for R1, now that we have one of these unknown variables, is to look at the first law of equilibrium. Sum of all forces up must equal sum of all forces down. Now, we could do it another way. We could do exactly this, but we could consider R2 to be our turning point. But that just needs more work and less time for the rest of your exams. 
So let's do it the first way. To find uh, one, um, I'm going to say the sum of all forces up must equal the sum of all forces down. All right, what are the forces up? R1 plus, now we've already figured out R2. I'm going to use this value over here. I'm going to keep it as accurate as I can for as long as I can. 643.53. That must be equal to the forces down. And then two forces down. 10 times 9.8 plus 70 times 9.8. And um, R1 is therefore going to be equal to... I'm going to take a shortcut here, guys, because I'm running out of space. This value plus this value, subtract 643.53, and that gives me an answer of 140.47. So I'm going to round that to 1.40 by 10 to the power of 2 newtons up. I've taken a shortcut here because I've run out of space. Um, so I've figured out the uh, reaction force of the right-hand leg on the seat and the left-hand leg on the seat, right and left, according to me. <clears throat> and the last thing I'm going to do is to think to myself, okay, does the answer make sense? It's like every time we solve a question in life, we, we think to ourselves, does the answer make sense? Does the solution make sense? In other words, because I'm sitting closer to the right-hand leg, R2 should be bigger than R1. And in fact, 644 compared to 140, the answer does make sense. And there lies our trestle problem. Um, just uh, keep in mind what I've said. I'll just summarize what I've said. No data key required if you can draw a really clear picture. Make sure that your answer is uh, um, written to the correct number of significant figures, even if, even if you have to use scientific notation. Give us a direction if it's a vector and um, underline your final answer so that your examiner is very, very clear as to where your answer is and what your answer is. Thanks.